Hello and welcome to Navigating the Permit Process for Tenant Improvements presented by the City of Santa Clarita. I'm John Caparelli with the City's Building and Safety Division and it's my pleasure today to present this video which will guide you through the permit process step by step. Our city adopts the California Building Codes. These codes provide California citizens with the highest level of fire and life safety, earthquake safety, access for the disabled, energy efficiency, and resource conservation. Building businesses that comply with the codes that are safe, efficient, and accessible adds value to your business and to the properties in our city. We take pride in enforcing the codes, but we also understand that meeting these high standards isn't always easy. And so we do our best to assist projects through the permit process. This video is a part of that effort. Today I'm going to go through some steps. If you follow those steps for your project, you'll go through the process much quicker. We're also going to talk about some of the common uh, errors and delays and pitfalls that a project can, can see during the process and what you can do to avoid those. Okay, let's go ahead and jump on in. Step one of the permit process is to work with qualified professionals. Step two, perform a thorough evaluation of existing conditions. Step three, create a preliminary site plan. Step four, visit the city's permit center. Step five, contact each of the agencies applicable to your project. Step six, have complete coordinated and professional plans prepared. Step seven, submit your plans to review to the applicable agencies. Step eight, resolve any plan review comments. And step nine, obtain your agency clearances, pay your permit fees, and pull your permit. Step one, the permit process will differ from one project to another. And so the first step, hire a qualified professional, somebody who understands your business, your type of project, and who can prepare plans that comply with the codes. A qualified professional will be able to identify the unique needs of your project early. Step two, perform a thorough investigation of the existing conditions on your site. Unfortunately, many projects fail to do this, and certain things aren't discovered until it's too late. Uh, every project should uh, research the existing plans and permits, visit the site, see what's out there, verify are the existing elements permitted, and identify any disabled accessibility deficiencies. During plan check, building and safety will be doing all of these. It's much better to discover any items that may need to be corrected before you submit to building and safety and have those things worked out before we discover them. Obtaining permit records and approved plans is very easy in Santa Clarita. Our permit center is open and our helpful staff can look up the permit information and plans for your building or project. Uh, usually this can be done within minutes. There are also several online tools that you can use, the city's GIS system and the county assessor's database. These tools are freely available and you can get parcel information and site information quickly and easily. Step three of the permit process is to create a preliminary site plan. You want to show all of the existing conditions. Indicate where your project is located. What is the scope of your work? Are there any upgrades that are, that are being done? Site plans should be clearly labeled. The way we want to see a plan is imagine you're handing your plan to someone who knows nothing about your project. Can they make sense of the project from your plans? The city provides numerous useful handouts for all of the common things that, that, uh, that we do. Uh, these handouts are freely available at our permit center or on our website. Step four of the process, come on in and visit the city's permit center. Bring your preliminary site plan where you've worked out kind of the basics of your project. You can come in uh, any time in the morning we're available uh, and one of our uh, helpful planners, building and safety uh, folks will help you to look at the project and, and make sure that you've got the basics covered before you get too far along in the process. The first stop at the permit center is city planning. Planning will look at your project and they'll check for certain zoning requirements, parking requirements, signage, finished materials, colors, and things like that. The second step when you come into the permit center is to go see building and safety. A building and safety project development coordinator, or PDC, will provide you with the following information. 
What building permits are required for your project? What information will be required on the plans? Will you need to hire an architect? What agency clearances will be required for your project? PDCs and plan reviewers are available uh, five days a week, any time before noon. Building and Safety will also prepare for you an agency referral sheet. This sheet will give you, a, in, in one page, a list of all of the applicable agencies that you'll need to get approvals from for your project. We will go through and identify those agencies very early on so that you know exactly what you're going to need in order to obtain a permit. A couple of quick tips. Take advantage of what the agencies have to offer. City planning, city building and safety, LA County agencies and other agencies all offer helpful handouts. Uh, the time you spend on your project before you prepare the plans is so very important. All of that time you spent up front will save you even more time afterwards during the process. Building and safety plan review fees will cover one review and two rechecks. Uh, that's important. Projects that uh, are submitted with incomplete plans will typically take more time to review. After we've performed three reviews, one review and two rechecks, additional fees will apply. That's why you want to make sure you submit plans as complete as possible. Building and Safety does offer electronic plan review, what we call e-plans. If your space already has a certificate of occupancy and you're not making any changes to the use of the space or, or, or doing any work that would uh, require a, a, a permit, then no new C of O is required. Step five of the permit process, contact all of the agencies applicable to your project. Determine what documents or fees each agency will require before you prepare the plans. Before building and safety can issue a building permit, uh, all of the applicable agency clearances must be obtained. You want to start the process with the agencies early. Doing the agency clearances and all the approvals simultaneously will help you get through the process quicker than handling them one by one. Step six of the permit process, have complete, coordinated, and professional plans prepared. Step six, this is the most important uh, part of the process. Again, the city enforces the California codes, which are some of the most robust building codes in the nation. Uh, Incomplete plans which do not comply with the codes cannot be approved. And submitting incomplete plans only delays the permit process. Lack of coordination between the codes, the trades on the project, these are common errors that we see in building and safety uh, on projects. And so you want to avoid those. All of the things in step one through five, if you follow those, then you'll have those things worked out before you get to step six. And by the time you're ready to prepare your plans, you'll have a complete picture and a complete idea of what needs to be provided. Step seven, submit two copies of your complete plans to building and safety uh, and the other agencies. All of the agencies will review your plans for code compliance. Our turnaround time in building and safety typically runs about two to four weeks. It can vary uh, as, as uh, workload changes. Uh, Plan review comments may be issued on your project. The project applicant will be contacted once plan review is complete. Building and safety engineers are available in person, by email, or by phone to answer your questions. We're easy to get a hold of. We're here to help. If you have questions about the codes, questions about what needs to be provided on your plans, contact us proactively. Step eight of the permit process, resolve any plan review comments. Most projects will have at least some plan review comments. Again, the codes are very complex these days, and so you can expect that there will be at least some comments, even on complete plans. Now, uh, the final plans that are prepared will have to incorporate all of those uh, corrections, and then those will be approved by Building and Safety and the other agencies. Multiple plan reviews may be required depending on how complete your plans are. For example, the building code requires handicap access upgrades on projects. Let's say you submit a plan and it doesn't include any accessibility upgrades. During the first review, we're going to ask you for those items. Now on the second plan check, those items are being provided for the first time. We're reviewing them for the first time on second review. 
If there's any corrections, we're automatically going to be going for a third plan review, which only delays the project. The best policy is to identify those items up front and prepare complete plans and submit them for first review and get through the process much, much quickly. Step nine and the final step of the process, obtain all of your agency clearances, pay your, your permit fees, and pull your building permit. Resubmit the plans to all of the applicable agencies, uh, preferably simultaneously, and obtain approvals on that final set of plans. Bring the approved plans and, and all of your receipts and payment receipts to Building and Safety. Building and Safety will confirm that you've got all of your agency clearances and that you're ready to be issued a building permit. Once you pay your fees and pull a building permit, uh, we will issue permits only to building owners or licensed contractors. Now, every tenant improvement project is unique. What I'd like to do to close out the video is go through a couple of examples with you to try to drive home the points that we've been making. Consider the following factors that can vary from one project to another. The proposed use of a space. Is it office, industrial, retail, assembly? What is the existing use of the space? Are you changing the use? Where is it located? Are you in an industrial area? Are you up on the second floor of a building? What is the size of your project? How old is the existing building? And what type of building? Is it wood framed, masonry? All of these different factors can vary from one project to another. And so, of course, the code requirements will vary from one project to another. Example one, consider a small retail store. Currently occupies a 2,000 square foot space. The sales floor is 1,300 square feet, and there's a small back office storage area. The store is proposing to expand their sales floor into a portion of the back area. The new space will grow from 1,300 to 1,650 square feet. The actual construction work of the project only involves demolishing one interior wall and a few hundred square feet of T-bar ceiling. And the construction cost is very low, only about $8,000. From a construction standpoint, this seems like a very small and simple project. But from a building code standpoint, there's some things that we need to consider. When the existing sales floor is expanded, we go from 43 occupants to 55. When the building code occupant load limit exceeds 49, certain safety requirements are triggered. For example, you need two exits. The exits need to be separated. The door swing, exit signage, tactile signage, and more are re now required by the building code for that space. Plans will be required, not just to show the, the wall that's being demolished in the ceiling, but to show how the space complies with these other code requirements. New work also triggers uh, disabled access upgrades. When new money is spent on buildings, state law requires that you spend additional money, 20%, on upgrading uh, any handicap items that may be deficient. Plans will be required showing how this is being done. We'll need to see plans and details showing which accessibility upgrades are being made. New lighting shall comply with the energy code. Plans will be required demonstrating compliance with the energy code. Plans must be approved by planning, building and safety, LA County Fire prior to building permit issuance. So you can see even a small tenant improvement the construction cost is, is fairly low. Maybe it's just one wall. But even a small project like that can trigger code requirements and, and will require you to have professional plans showing how you're complying with the building code. Let's look at another example. Consider a new restaurant going into a retail building. So we've got a change of use. A new restaurant is proposing to move into a portion of an existing retail space. The dining and waiting areas of the restaurant are 5,000 square feet. And the back area, kitchen, office, restrooms, we have about 2,000 square feet. The existing building is a one-story, 12,000 square foot building, built in 1980, type 5 combustible construction, and it's non-sprinklered. The proposed construction work includes new partition walls, new restrooms, a new kitchen area, rooftop uh, HVAC equipment, ceilings and soffits, mechanical plumbing and electrical. The total cost of this example project is much higher, $800,000. Now let's see what would be required for a project of this magnitude. Santa Clarita planning will require more parking for restaurants than for retails. A parking analysis will be required. That's something that you would discover contacting the city early. You don't want to get too far along in the process and find out that something like that is needed too late. The dining and waiting areas are assembly occupancies. 
The existing building was designed for retail and office space. The allowable area of the existing building will not accommodate the restaurant without significant updates. Fire rated construction or sprinklers may be required. Consider the cost of adding sprinklers or firewalls into a building. Those are things you want to find out early. The existing building was built before disabled accessibility uh, requirements were in the building code. And so there's going to be a lot of items in that building that maybe don't comply with the, the current handicap requirements. Those things will need to be upgraded. That could be a significant cost, 20% of the project. Structural engineering will be required for the rooftop equipment, bracing and suspended ceilings. Kitchen equipment, including uh, water heaters and so forth, are regulated by the Energy Commission to make sure they're energy efficient. Uh, the California Building Code will require separate restrooms for men and women. If the existing space doesn't include these items, uh, it will need to be brought up to code. And as you can imagine, the, the cost and scope of the project here uh, is much, much greater than the last example. These are all things that the staff at the Permit Center can help you identify uh, early. But more, more important than that, you want to get a qualified designer on board who can prepare plans that comply with all of these codes. Uh, hiring a, a designer who's not familiar with the codes and, and does not prepare a complete plan can delay a project like this significantly. Complete plans will be required to show compliance with all of the code requirements, fire and life safety, access, structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, energy, green. Uh, plans will be required to be prepared by licensed professionals. Prior to permit issuance, all of these agency clearances would be required for that example restaurant. Planning, building and safety, environmental services, LA County Fire, water agency, sanitation and health and industrial waste. So you can notice the difference between example one and example two. Two different tenant improvement projects, two different scopes, and two completely different uh, uh, sets of requirements uh, in order to obtain a building permit. And so that's why uh, you want to make sure that you follow the steps of the permit process. Do as much work as you can up front uh, so that uh, compliance with some of these items doesn't cause a delay uh, during the permit process. With that, I'd like to con uh, conclude uh, our presentation today. It's been a pleasure giving this presentation to you. And uh, I'd like to mention that our permit center uh, in City Hall uh, is open and available to you. If you have any questions about the codes or what's required to your project, please don't hesitate to contact us as early as possible. And thank you for watching.